I've talked about this in my streams. More on that in a second. Picard Season 3 is out now. And I was cautiously optimistic about it. So let's talk about that. Greetings, Dave here. Dave Spivax. I want to talk about Picard Season 3, Episode 1, because it's finally here after seeing some pretty cool trailers and everything going on. It's out, and it wasn't that bad. Remember this way. Picard Season 1 came out, what, three years ago? I fought to get through it. Season 2 came out, what, two years ago, a year ago? I'm not done yet. I just finished Episode 4. Now, the thing is, I watched Episode 1 of Season 3, not bad, not bad. And I'll talk about that in a second. But then I watched season episode four of season two. It's just such a slog to get through. But anyway, it wasn't... It sounded like to say this about Star Trek. It wasn't that bad. I found some parts of it were really enjoyable. Even little bits of it, like they got rid, at least in the first episode, they got rid of the Picard theme and they just get right into it and it's good to go. Maybe it's the version I, I saw, I don't know. But it was got right to it. And I had some parts I really enjoyed. Some of the parts are still kind of right off the bat, having Riker back. Now he was in an uh, earlier season, I guess season two. And he was okay. But this seeing Captain Riker it was great seeing them back together again. It was really, it was enjoyable. And their banter back and forth. And, oh, my knees are killing me. All those things. That was great. Really good to see that. Uh, other things that were cool is just, it was enjoyable. It wasn't a slog. It wasn't all these things that it has been in the past or other seasons. Now, a couple of things I have concerns with. First of all, there's this. Okay, I fixed it with this. That's what a starship should look like. Like, you have, granted this is all make-believe, you have a warp core that takes a antimatter and matter explosion and filters that energy through the lithium crystals in order to generate a warp field. That gives them, essentially, unlimited power. Why is everything so grimdark? Like, it should look like that. Like, in the first one, you can't even tell who's there, who's sitting in the seats. I don't know. I know it was there because I saw it, but it in one slider, see what's going on. So that's one thing, and that's what Discovery has been, and Picard, like, it's just, why is everything so dark? You've unlimited power, just do it. Another real problem I had with this, now, if you've seen any of Picard, in season one, he was dying of a brain disease, and eventually, Dr. Soon, well, one of the Dr. Soons, took his consciousness, put it into a robot, body, a golem, so to speak. And they said, we made it your age and has a comparable lifespan, all these things. Okay, it's a robot body that they never talk about again. In fact, even in episode four of season two, when Rios is being questioned by uh, Ice, well, I actually am from the 24th century. I'm here with a, a retired admiral who's actually in a robot body, but it's his consciousness. We don't talk about it. And no one talks about it anymore. And they had such a great out in season two because Q was dying. Q was doing all these things. Could be very simple. Oh, Jean-Luc and a robot. No, I don't think so. And then voila, we have, you know, uh, Picard in a regular body again and done. I said that on Secret Star Trek a couple weeks ago. I said, here's your out. Was, oh, Jean-Luc. And then done. Anyway. So the reason I'm saying that is in this episode before, like, Beverly gets in trouble and she sends a coded message to John Luke's old communicator, which, why would she do that? And he's sitting at the desk, writing with a pen, like who has ink in the 24th century. He has glasses on. You're a robot. That doesn't make, like, it makes sense for Patrick Stewart to have them. It doesn't make sense for Picard robot to have them. But anyway. Another part that didn't really sit well with me is this whole subplot with Raffi. Now, I'm sure Michelle Hurd is a good actress. I just haven't seen anything good in season one, season two, and now episode one of season three. I, why are there addicts in the 24th century? And like, yeah, yeah, okay, it's a backstory for her, but when we get to her on screen, it, the whole thing just drags, just, 
oh, rafi has gone good. Let's get back to the story. It just seemed very, eh. Um, also, too, um, one thing, whether it's uh, foreshadowing for, you know, everything that's going on these days with, you know, with dead naming and all those other things that have happened in this society, where we have our new Captain Shaw who refuses to refer to Seven as Seven. It ref- makes her go by, you know, Annika Hansen, which was her name before she assimilated by the Borg. It's just kind of like, no, I'm not calling you that. I'm calling you this. It, which, that's what the world is doing these days. Oh, don't you dare dead name me. And I, I have a trans son, and sometimes I get his name wrong, and he understands because, well, he was something else for 16 years. I'm still adapting. But, see where it goes with that. I know Shaw was a dick, and Shaw's a dick for a reason. And it almost seems like he's sort of throwing it in their teeth for the movies. You know, we don't crash lands and this and this. this. all, you know, stuff from the movies, not so much from the series. Another thing, interesting we, thing we uh, get presented is, and this I have to give props to, I think it was uh, Dr. Price who said this, about we get the reveal of Beverly. She's in stasis, and there's a gentleman on the ship. And who are you? I'm her son. And it's not Wesley. So... Um, Earlier, we're seeing um, a locker box that had Jack Crush on it. So there's rumor and speculation that she's cloned Jack. And so my friend, I think it was Dr. Price, who said, yeah, it's Jack Luke Crusher. So maybe he's, he's a combination of Jean-Luc's DNA and Jack's DNA. And who knows? We'll see where it goes from there. But, uh, yeah. So in the end, I thought this was pretty good. I enjoy it a lot more than I enjoyed season one and season two, so we'll see where it goes from there. But it is something better. We'll see where we go from there. We still have the big bad to show up. Well, she showed up at the very end. Well, this large ship shows up, looks Romulan-ish. Uh, it shows up and it's sort of cut, and then we'll come into episode two. We'll see where that goes. Looking forward to Jordy. We did see his daughter um, crash LaForge, and we'll see more of that, and we'll see uh, Worf, and we'll see Lore human-ish. Or maybe it's Dr. Soon. I'm not sure what we're going to see. I haven't, we haven't been told that yet. But in the end, I would say that this gets me a solid uh, B-. minus. It's much more enjoyable than the other ones have been, and I, I like it well enough. So we'll see where we go from here. But that is something that um, you know, we're going to watch and see. There are only 10 episodes for a season that can't be that long to get through, so we'll see where that goes. So that was going to be my stream for uh, tonight, but I'm just noticing that my streams aren't getting looked at much at all. So rather than putting the time and effort into doing those to maybe get watched a couple of weeks, a couple of months down the road, I'm just going to focus on doing better videos for the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So this stream, you know, I've just sort of canceled it, but this is the topic I was going to use and now we're going to move forward from there. Uh, I may do more like the John Krasinski did in the beginning of the pandemic. Maybe it's do an SGN, some good news. And maybe a little blurb here, a little blurb there, and we'll see where we go from there. But I just, I, I thought I'm spending all this time and energy and it's really not going anywhere, so why not just cut my losses? Anyway, so that is my video for today. If you haven't checked it out, try and find it. I think it's on Paramount Plus. Up in your Canada, it's on Sci-Fi, uh, a few other things. So you can check it out. There's lots of places you can find it to watch it. So there you go. So we, I'm eagerly waiting to see what it comes up with episode two, which will be coming later this week. And since I'm recording this the day before, I am interested to see what Larry and John and Dan have to say about it as well. So that'll be interesting to see as well. So thanks for stopping by. I hope everyone's having a great day. We'll talk to you all.